The desert sage is in bloom in this early autumn, and the yellow flowers are quite catching when you look at them. They are all over the place, and it is a very nice type of environment to be in in the autumn. Here is a closer look of the desert sage in bloom at this time of the year here at the Oregon Mountains. We're on our way to hike up down the trail, but what I just wanted to show in here is that you have to have a pass, a card. We have this, this one here. This is a park ranger or a park pass. And this one is for an entire year for the parks here. It is honored in national parks throughout the United States. And this one is for senior citizens of age 62 and older and it is for $20 for the entire year. It will save you a lot though because for each entry it's $5 per entry with a car. But with this card you can actually get your money back in just four entries and we have used this since January. Yeah. Well, we're walking down the trail now, getting ready to pass the entryway. We're at the trailhead right now for La Cueva in Dripping Springs in New Mexico. And uh, here's Chip ahead of me. And the sky's up on the mountains. It's beautiful. And it's really blue in color. So it is a nice day for a hike. Here is a closer look of the signage for the La Cueva trailhead. The trail is lined with this tiny or shall we say young mesquite bushes. This will become trees when they reach the mature age. You also have the creosote bushes here along the way and these are just bushes. They're about three to five feet tall in height. We're going now to the cave which is called La Cueva. That's the Spanish name for the cave and that is the cave that was utilized by the Native American Indians here in the area to hunt in. So it is their hunting cave and so we're going that path today. Here's a black bug that's making its sway in the pathway. I think this is called a stink bug because it will race its behind if it's threatened and it will throw some really stinky acid out just to protect itself. The path here is rocky and here is a warning sign as well. And this warning actually will read to warn people from climbing the mountains and if they don't have any water with them. Also a warning for snakes. Along the path is also an array of the native cactus plant, which is called the prickly pear. Here's the close-up of the prickly pear cactus. As you can see, the thorns are very long as well, maybe about three inches. This is native to this area, and we do have these also in our backyard. I'll give us 10 minutes, we'll be very slow. You'll get there. It's not, it's not how fast you do it. Journey. Here's a helicopter leaving from White Sands Missile Range. Don't know where this one is going. Probably to El Paso, to Fort Bliss. Here's the signage that split Fillmore Canyon and the La Cueva trails. So there are two trails, one to the left and one to the right. The signage to the entrance of this trail warns dog own owners not to walk further from this trail. It says, dogs not allowed on trail past this point. This is critical habitat for rare an in endemic species. So it means that there are rare species of animals and plants here and so bringing in dogs 
to these areas are not permitted. We're hike hiking towards La Cueva or the cave right now. So these are just some of the plants that are on trail in the side of the trail that's marked for hiking. We're walking up this trail. I'm already winded. We're not there yet. So come on along. We're going up to the caves. This is the Spanish blade plant, and here are the remains of the bloom. It is still in bloom. The one behind it is still green. Here's the Spanish blade, and I'm just going to scan all the way to the top so you could see the blooms. It is quite a tall plant. And right there is the barrel cactus. If you can see the spines on this cactus, it's very, very long. It's about five to six inches, I believe. And this is the needles, and this can really prick you. Here are the remains of the blooms, and they should turn into berries pretty soon. The path is crossing through a cliff in here. It is quite rocky in formation. And there's Chip at a distance, and he is taking a video of something. But this is just a view, and it is quite rocky over here, so I am probably going to shut my video off to negotiate this rocky place. It would be a hard fall if I slip on this one. Here's a nice view of this rocky cliffside when you are going to the cave. But it is very picturesque at this time of the afternoon. Right below the canyons are the black oak trees of the area. These are very big trees, but from this distance in the canyon, it looks small. This is a good view of this rocky formation. It almost looks like it is a rock garden, but this, this is a natural one in its place. I love the way the prickly pear grows in the side of the cliff and also the other vegetation in here as well. Here's a black oak tree against the cliff. It is quite interesting how this tree have made it. It probably gets watered from the runoff of the cliffs, cliffs right here. When it rains, it does come down in torrents back here on the side of this hill. Here's Chip doing his video, caught in the act. Below in the valley 
is a view of the Cox COX ranch that is now made into a ranger station. So right here you can go in also and look at exhibits. There's a small museum there. We are now entering the hunting caves of the early Native Americans and this has been placed with asphalt shingles to make the pathway a little smoother. And right here is the entrance of the cave. The cave was used as a hunting cave for Native, Native Americans in the early days. I'm gonna walk in to show you the cave. This is quite very interesting because in here you can see the suit in the ceilings of hundreds or thousands of years being used as a hunting cave when the Native Americans built their fires when they were hunting, the suit deposited in the ceiling and it's quite very black like charcoal. From the inside, this is the view of this hunting cave. It is beautiful here and very, very peaceful. So I'm just going to scan so that you can see what this hunting cave looks like. There's Chip as well, taking his own video of the caves. We're on our way home now. The sun is about coming to go down. It is about 6.30 now in the afternoon. Just got to show the blue, blue skies right here. There's not a cloud in the sky, but the blue color of the sky is just fantastic. Have a look at the rock formation here, and the vegetation is clinging to this cliff right here. I'm going to zoom right here. There is the Spanish blade in the corner, and right here in the, the middle and the outer right side is the black oak tree. This is really an awesome view. I can see a wet area in here. It looks like this is the area that feeds those vegetation here that you can see in the cliff because it follows the cracks and it goes all the way to the roots right here. The sun is setting now, so we're on our way home. 
and it is a, a bit windy and cooler now here at the Oregon Mountains. This is a tricky trail and you have to keep your footing correctly because I have slipped in here once and dislocated my pinky finger and that cost $400 at the emergency room at my own pocket. There's Chip going down right now. We're on our way home. It's kind of steep in there so you really do have to be careful with your footing. If you slip that pile there is a solid rocks. So if it looks like it's soil under trail, it is not. That's rocky areas there. Here's the moon and it's just rising right now over the mountain. It's fantastic to see this one. Here's the close-up. Well, after a long hike, it's good to come home to a good meal. We're having turkey sandwiches, potato chips, a salad, good salad, good fresh salad with ranch dressing over here. And then we're having chicken soup too. We got dessert here, little cinnamon strudel. Rosa's having a cup of coffee with her meal and iced tea. You know, this is something we do after we hike. I think it's a healthy meal and uh, we're going to have a good evening, relax, and watch YouTube videos probably. But thanks for watching the video folks. Talk to you later.